please bring out Tristan. We're celebrating mom with new parents, Bill and Juliana Rancic. We put her in marriage first because we want to be the best example for our son. From finding each other. I googled Bill Rancic girlfriend. No shame. To their baby love. Your life gets flipped upside down. Yeah. yeah. Then how two separated sisters made a whole new life together. She was willing to give me a child before she even had her own. All right, a little about me. I'm recently married. Ah. I work with my wife on this show, and I'm learning how to be a dad to two amazing kids in a blended family. <laughs> I'm hosting a talk show because there's a lot to talk about. This is the adventure. Let's go. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. Thank you very much. It's our Mother's Day show. Mother's Day on Sunday, so we thought we'd bring some great stories and some great moms. We'll meet two sisters, Jen and Juliet. Tragic event tore their family apart. They were separated today. They're closer than ever. They have an amazing story, uh, all based around love and eggs and fertility and being a mom. All right, when you hear the story of really a tragic childhood that sisters Jen and Juliet endured, you will not believe how the story ends. Roll it. When I was 12 and Jen was six months old, our vehicle was struck and we were in a horrible accident. On the way to the hospital, my mother passed away. My father had always had anger issues and the violence got worse. I left and ran away to Washington, D.C. My biggest regret was leaving my sister, Jen. Being homeless was hard. You eat out of trash cans, you, um, try to find money, you do what it takes. I lived on the streets for about six months. I decided that I wanted to, to at least try to go back home. And when I got there, I realized they've moved. There's no home to go back to. I started into the foster care system, lived with 15 different families, and I longed for Jen every day. I really felt like I was totally and utterly alone. And that is a hard feeling. All right, so Juliet had no idea that her father had actually taken her baby sister, Jen, who was 12 years younger, and moved to Houston. Sadly, it wouldn't be long until Jen ended up in foster care, too. 14 years later, their father passed away. By this time, Juliet, she had got her life together. She got married, but she discovered Jen's whereabouts in Houston and went to find her sister. Roll it. I remember pulling up in the driveway and seeing Jen at the door. And just being too fearful to get out of the car and just sitting in the car crying because I felt like my life was flashing all before me. I was finally at the point that I could actually touch this girl, Jen, and I couldn't even get out of the car. I was excited to see her and to finally meet her in person. It was a very mixed moment. There was a lot of tears, but there was happiness, and uh, if I ever needed it, she offered me a plane ticket to um, be with her. Uh, all I needed to do was give her a call. So I moved in with uh, my sister and her husband. When Jen moved in, she didn't know that I was struggling with infertility. For over a year, we'd spent a lot of money, and we were told that the only way we would be able to conceive would be to use a donor egg. I told my sister that I would donate my eggs or do whatever it took to help her. It felt like something I could do. It meant so much that she was willing to give me a child before she even had her own. Thanks for being here, Juliet and Jen. We were crying during that whole yeah. piece. You know, the first thing that, that struck us about this story is the power of family, the power of siblings, the power that even though decades, I mean, years and years had gone by, that bond never lessened and you were never done. That sisterhood was going to come back. That is very true. It's amazing. We were most shocked 
how much we were alike, although we'd spent our entire lives apart. What happened, tell to me about that. I think it's fantastic that you find, you go find your younger sister. You're basically gonna say, I'm gonna bring you out and you're gonna be with me and we're going to figure this out. Then, as you share, tell me if I have this right, you share that you can't get pregnant and she says, I'll help. It was a very interesting situation because she was, uh, she was a, she was my sister, but she was also a stranger. And to make mm. such a big offer to somebody like that, to give life, it's an amazing gift and it's an amazing offer. So what is that process? That, that process is extremely uh, time consuming. It involves a lot of shots and a lot of doctor's appointments, but we kind of made this deal with each other that no matter what, we were gonna do it together. Every night when it was time for Jen to take her shots, I would be right there helping, mm. even if it was just holding a syringe, um, holding a cotton swab or something. Every night we had the same routine. And the funniest thing is, one night we were on our way to the fertility clinic um, because you're con constantly going to fertility clinic to, to check on the status of where you are and if you, the eggs are growing and we knew we were getting close. So we were driving down the interstate, it was a Sunday, and um, we were anxious because we knew, we knew we were just about ready to get you know, our, our eggs and so we were excited, our project was, was growing and I must have been speeding and I see blue lights behind me and I'm like, oh no, oh, oh wait, we gotta get to the clinic, we cannot. So the police officer pulls me over and I said, officer, you, you do whatever you have to do, just make it fast. I got a lot of money wrapped up right here. And I said it just like that. I said, right, I got a lot of money wrapped up right here and a lot of time and energy. So whatever the fine, whatever it is, you just write out the ticket and you give it to me because we gotta go. <laughs> And remember he said, when he came back with the ticket, he said, actually, no, ma'am, it wasn't for speeding. It was for your Ill illegal window tent. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but so he said, you know what? You have my permission to speed the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? It was a Sunday. Jim, was there ever any hesitation to take this on? No, there wasn't. It was... It popped in my mind and came out of my mouth quicker than I could even. <laughs> and so let me make sure I have it right. You are carrying, no, you gave your eggs mm -hmm. to you. So you are, you are carrying the baby, but it's with a part of you in there. So you really have now made this sisterhood about as complete as it can get yes. in creating a new life together with your husband, Juliet. Yes. So what is that for you? Is there any concern about the bond? So I had a concern that um, it was for the bond, yes, and I was concerned that Jen was giving me something before she'd had a chance to, to have it herself. I was very fearful that if Jen... Meaning that she hadn't had a baby. Yes, that Jen was giving me life and giving me the opportunity to, to, to fulfill my dreams of being a mother. And the fact that it could possibly strip her from being able to have her own. It was a very big decision because I did not want her to have to suffer the way I had with infertility mm. and to feel that, that desperation. So it, there was a, it was a unique situation because I wanted something so badly, but I loved her more. I loved Jen more than that need that I had for myself. So it was a unique balance and then as would seem normal, but I didn't think it was normal at that time, I was afraid that this life that was growing in my stomach, that this life would come out and say, you're not my mom, that's my mom. Yeah. And it's a very real fear. Yeah. And um, it concerned me through my pregnancy. Did that happen? No. No. Uh, what's interesting is, um, Emma actually acts a, a lot like me, per my husband. Um, but I think he acts, she acts like a great combination of, of Jen and exactly I. Exactly what you want. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, what Juliet and Jen tell Emma about their special bond and the surprise that Jen got the younger sister after she donated her eggs to her older sister. We'll be back in a moment.
The best moment of my entire life is when Emma was born and I got to hold this precious little miracle. All of the bad that had ever happened in my life, it was all sewn shut. It was like that chapter just closed. Jen shows up and I said, look, our little project, it's here. We can hold her, we can touch her. It meant the world to me that she gave me the gift of life. And it was the gift of life. <laughs> I love you so much. Love you. Pretty sweet. We are here with sisters Juliet and Jen. When Juliet couldn't get pregnant, Jen gave her own eggs to her sister to help. And today, Juliet has a daughter, Emma, who I met backstage, who's four years old and absolutely adorable. So, what do you guys tell her about her life? Well, we decided early on in the process that it was very important to be honest. And I would hate for her to find out at a 4th of July picnic, oh, do you know Aunt Jen is really your mom? I do not want that. It's not the way to go. Um, we felt like honesty was the best policy, so we made up something for her so that she would understand it. And even at a young age, so it was constantly reinforced with her, I held up my hand and I said, this is how you were made. You were so special because mommy wanted you so much and mommy loves you so much that it's a little bit of Aunt Jen, a little bit of daddy, a whole lot of God, and then mommy did the rest. And at two years old, she could repeat that. Oh. So. I love that you're thinking ahead and making that easy for her. Yes. And here's the best part of this story. You then find out what? That I'm pregnant. Four months later, I found out I was. <laughs> it's been tough. Lester, as a dad and now having a, a new sister-in-law, you got some pretty good women in your life. Yep, attractive right. women too. Yeah. <laughs> and a cute daughter. All right, up next we get to meet little Emma. She'll be here after the break. Take the break. All right, we have Jen and Juliet's miracle girl, I think is fair to say. Emma is here. Hi, Emma. Hi. Have you, were you able to watch the show backstage? How do you, how do you think uh, mom did? Good. Yeah. <laughs> what's it like being a part of this family? Do you, you know, your mom said that, what's the saying about how you came into the world? Do you remember it? Mm-hmm. What is it? I'm doing a mommy's hand. It's a little bit. Of Aunt Jen. A little bit. Of Daddy. A whole lot of. God. And mommy took care of the rest. Yeah. Oh. oh, that is a perfect way to end this. Jen, Juliet, Lester, Emma, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. I know you had a lot of people that wanted to talk to you, and I appreciate you believing in us. That means a lot. And good luck with your family. Jen, thank good you. luck with your family. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's it. That's the show. Thanks for hanging.